Good morning, folks. A lot of buzz about this article, and while we are way overdue for a shift, this is borderline fear-mongering. In the next week, I'll need to fully recap the pole shift situation. Could be a landmark precedent set if these farmers successfully take on big oil. We knew the Antarctic ice was breaking record highs while the Arctic shrunk to record lows, so we got a solid article here focused on the South, and I'll put a link below to the Arctic ice blog where we can all stay up to date on this. Began the day with an otherwise unreported mid-sized quake in Egypt. Midday saw moderate tremors in Costa Rica and later in Iran. Near day's end, the South Sandwich Islands near Antarctica began to shake and we actually registered more than one event. Four minutes in between counts as two quakes. Poland getting in the mix here as well, kind of unusual for that region. This was last night, and we're going to use it for pattern recognition for you guys doing this on your own. Notice where the red high pressure system was, the air appears to spawn centrally and spiral outward, whereas the blue low pressure system appears to be sucking it all in as we've seen time and time again. Moving on to tropical development, here's Praparoon in the West Pacific around level 3 typhoon status. The new East Pacific low appears to be window shopping nature's coastline strip mall for a place to make landfall, and the significant deviation from yesterday's model here, but still no clear concurrence on forecast track. As the weather shifts, you might consider checking the NOAA National Alert map, and always be checking Torcon, of course. Got the southwest and the red today as a result of this cyclonic mass bringing moist air from the Pacific up over land. Australians got that storm I warned about, but a bit worse than I anticipated. Some roofs were blown off and there's a little bit of other damage reported. Solar wind speed in the yellow shows a slow ending to this coronal hole stream. You would expect minor magnetic reverberations which did pick back up around the 1800 hour UTC yesterday. Around that same time we had significant plasma penetration of our shields at the red spike. After taking the afternoon off, flares may be picking up again. This big active region turning the northeastern limb should be labeled Beta Gamma Magnetic Class. It poses a clear threat for big flares, but has done nothing since firing the big one before coming into view. On the southeastern limb, this active region, although smaller, has popped out more flares than the sister spot up north. Need a few more hours to catch the Magnetic Class, but no need to wait on our flare watch as she's dangerous right now. On top of that, the massive dark coronal hole faced us last night and is spewing a strong solar wind stream that may impact Earth this weekend. Eyes open? No fear. I'll leave you with 193 angstroms followed by the planetary positions on deck. It's just past 6 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.